Well, hello, friends. How you doing this morning? It's a beautiful day here in Tallahassee, a little gray, which is a okay. If you haven't noticed from this view, I'm wearing a new helmet. Yeah, wow, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're getting ready to leave here soon for Key West. We were struggling with uh, whether we were going to get this thing in, and, and uh, the helmet came in. Hello friends, Coach Bob with you today, and today, as you can see, I am wearing a new helmet, the Shoei Neotech. It is a beautiful helmet. I'm going to lower this face shield. Actually, I'm going to leave it up just a smidgen like that. Um, I'm working with some different uh, mounts for the, um, for the microphone for recording my voice, seeing how much wind it's going to pick up and that sort of thing. Um, I will tell you, I've had the Neotech now for a couple of days. We didn't think it was going to come in. Uh, we had a few things going on, and the videos that you're going to be watching over the next couple of weeks, they're not really in a, in a time sequence. Um, it's funny. Normally, I, I record everything pretty much the day before it's released, and then before we have an upcoming trip, I'm all over the place. I'm trying to get material done for you guys because I want you to be able to certainly like with the worship on wheels and things like that I want you to be able to have things out there uh, to enjoy watching I really do take a lot of pride in making the content good and quality and and I worry about camera angles and helmet sound and all of that stuff and it may not be noticed and that's okay it doesn't upset me that you don't notice it because trust me I do notice it uh, every time I get a comment about lighting or something like that where you know hey man this was a good video but I just couldn't see what you were doing um, I know that's frustrating to the to the end user you guys um, and for me it's frustrating to me because you know I don't have a light crew or any of that stuff but anyway back on the helmet you know the quality and everything so I'm out testing this thing this morning and I've been uh, checking the helmet out over the last couple of days uh, as far as noise quality of the helmet and I'm gonna give the the Neotech we're gonna rate it in a few areas I'm gonna lower this face shield as we get up to high well actually I'm gonna leave it up I, I want to see how the recording sounds because I'm we're preparing for our big trip and I want to be able to ride with my face shield up if need be when it's hot and with it now when it's cold so we'll we'll test out both ways but let's talk a few things showy Neotech 2 uh, first off let's do the unboxing my showy Neotech 2 is here um, coach Vix is I thought hers was gonna be here first I received a uh, email today saying a part of the shipment has been shipped indicating that her helmet was shipped but it didn't say anything about mine and mine is here. I literally ordered this thing Sunday evening. Today is Thursday and it's here. Hers is supposed to be here on Saturday. So it looks like we might be able to wear our new helmets on our trip. I'm going to look at moving comm system from one helmet to another but we'll talk about that all in a minute. Let's get this helmet unboxed and check it out because I know it is going to be top-notch and beautiful. Oh yeah, super excited about this. I've wanted a Neotech for a long time. And uh, I'm like, like Coach Vic, I'm kind of cheap. Although I knew that I was eventually going to bite the bullet. And then once I did, I'm not going to get the plain color. If I'm going to spend seven, I might as well spend eight and get the color I want. All right. Let's open this thing up. In typical showy fashion, it is always beautiful. There's the pen lock, so it does come with the pen lock. All of your pieces. The little seal it lubricant for the seal around the, the face shield. Oh, ho, ho. That is a beautiful helmet, y'all. That is absolutely beautiful. This is a large. Fits perfectly. Hang on, the dogs are barking. All right, I got that straightened out. Okay, so here's the helmet. Um, obviously, I have to clean the face shield off. There it is. Flips up, and then you grab the bar right there. 
flips up. When you bring it down, shield comes with it. You can lift it with the shield, lower it with the shield. You can have the, you can have the shield lifted up, lift the bar. When you do, it comes down with the shield. When the, when the face shield is up, if you go halfway up though, it won't lock. You can see that. So it only locks when you have it up and out of the way. Also has the visor, the sun visor in there. So let's take this thing off. And I'm going to show you around on this helmet and we'll see what we're going to do. Now, as with anything on the showies, everything on these things are just absolute top notch. Unlock technology, everything is perfect. Uh, you pull this piece down here and this right here just pops right out. Pin lock goes right here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get, I'm going to place this on something and we're going to go ahead and set this pin lock up. All right, so let's get this thing opened up a little bit here. For anyone who doesn't have a helmet with pin lock, you really owe it to yourself to check out the pin lock technology. Um, it will absolutely keep your windscreen or your face screen, whatever you want to call it, from fogging up. And what you have, you just have a piece of plastic and on the inside there is a small silicone seal and that seal goes like this around these little pieces and then when the face shield folds back up there you have it and then you peel your plastic covering off and you are done now the big thing you just have to make sure you're right side up you can look at the uh, shape of the face shield and it will only go one way you know it's always a little disconcerting as you're bending this thing out and it does feel odd you just have to trust the system and go for it and actually flatten this thing out. And when you do, you'll feel the pin lock lock into place and that's it. It just locks itself right in. It seals the air in. It gives you a second pane of glass. You peel that off. There you have a nice pin lock windscreen on your helmet. That simple, that easy. This is not the first one I've ever done, but it was obviously easy. You know what? I'm going to leave this off for the moment uh, as we start disassembling in preparation for a comm system. Now, for those of you in the know about the Shoei Neotech, um, these pieces aren't just decoration. They make a Cena uh, comm system that will integrate into this helmet. It goes in here. The uh, guts of it go back here in a secret compartment, and it just mounts in there beautifully. However, it's $300 for a device that I don't think, well, just honestly, it's a $300 device that's inferior to what I have right now. I don't like that. And, and one of my complaints about helmets is that they're going to these proprietary contracts with companies and that's what they're doing and that's their business. Is what I'm going to do gonna work? Probably, if not, you know what I'll do? I'll order the darn system, but it's not what I want to do. So I'm going to do my best to make what I have work with this helmet because I want it to. I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. This is my old Cardo Pack Talk box, and I keep all of my old parts, of course. So it has an adhesive mount. So the adhesive mount will go right back here, right there. And then the Cardo will mount on that. If it's going to be secure, I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to be close enough to where I want it. You know, one of the things is you is you disassemble helmets, and, and I've disassembled a, a ton of them. Um, it's always a little disconcerting. Dogs are killing me. First thing you have to do, you have to take the chin strap out through the uh, this little hole here. Do that on both sides to unsnap the cheek pads, indicating that there's a snap in there. And there it is and it unsnapped beautifully. So there are two snaps in the front, one snap in the back, and it just slides right out of that little groove right there. I have done this a million times on my showy, so this right here snaps in the back and just lifts right out. Yep, there we go. And I'm not gonna have to pull that out. That's just to run wires if I need that out. Then you're gonna have uh, little cushions that cover up the ear pockets where your speaker pods will go. Um, they just pop right out. There they are. Pull this one out too. 
so the helmet really right now at this point is broken down to the extent speakers would go in here. There is a slot, I'm told. I have not looked at this yet. Let's move this out of my way. Um, there is a slot right there. This is for the proprietary microphone. I'm going to see what the Cardo microphone does here. It does appear there that the Cardo will fit in that notch. And with me, what I have to do is make sure that this microphone is going far enough around to the front and not binding anywhere. So that's gonna work. Micro, the, uh, obviously the earbuds will go there. So the big thing is the control panel. All right, so it took me a couple of minutes to pull the Cardo out of there. Here's basically what you have. You have a couple of ear speakers, right? Um, they secure to a little piece of Velcro that goes into the helmet. This is the piece that it hooks to. Uh, this hooks to your speakers. This hooks to your microphone, and that's all there is to it. And then this side piece, which hooks onto the helmet, this piece here clips in. So I can have this on one helmet, this on another helmet, and move this piece from helmet to helmet to helmet. I like that idea. Um, the question is, can I reuse this piece? I would love to. I'm gonna see if this will fit on the Neotech. If not, I'm gonna go with this one really not very complicated at all. Um, we, we're prone to overcomplicating these things. But let's, I'm gonna grab the Neotech uh, off camera and just kind of do a little fiddling about and see if this is gonna work. If it isn't gonna work, there's no need me dragging you through it. If it does work, I'll let you know. All right, so let's dispel some myths and rumors and that sort of thing because there's been a lot of talk online about whether this will go over this plastic piece right here. And if so, will it stay? So what I'm gonna do, is over over the existing plastic shroud that is there, just gonna take this Cardo Pack Talk bolt and I'm gonna slide it over the top of it and see what happens. So let's see if that impedes the chin curtain. It does not. Therefore, that right there. So yeah, you can use your traditional mount. On this helmet, just to let you know, there is a there is a plastic tab, and if that plastic tab is in the way then you will have to manipulate the direction in which you go with this. Understand that if you, let's say for chuckles and grins, you damaged this piece right here. If you buy the new, the new communication system, that piece is actually done away with and replaced. Not really a critical issue. So this is what it will look like. The question is now, once I get this on, will it allow me to move this. So in other words, my sun visor, can I get to it? I can. It's right above it, not a problem. And can I get to, can the chin bar without being impeded by this go up and down? There's the outer flange. You can see there's no binding of any kind. There's nothing keeping that chin bar in any place that it should not be. So the Cardo Pack Talk Bolt is going to go right on here. It looks like it's just gonna fit right in like it was made to, which really, really surprises me. Now you just take these speakers, again, you have a wire like this and like this. It just plugs right in, that's that. Drop your speaker in, the closest one obviously goes to the close side. It just has a piece of Velcro that secures it right there. The other one goes to the other side, obviously. You have two ears, two sides, right? Now, speakers are in. That's all there is to that. Uh, the amount of wire that's included with the speaker is more than adequate. Uh, it'll drop right behind here. You just run the wire the way you would the way you would run it. Now with me, because I'm vlogging, I'm gonna be running into issues that you won't be running into. I will be having to hook up a separate microphone and a camera mount and those sorts of things. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's see if we can get a boom microphone installed. So this will simply plug into here. It'll go right in that notch there. That feels pretty darn secure. Even without the Velcro on it, it's fitting right down in that little trench that I was telling you about. You can see there's a little trench that's designed for the SRT piece, the SRL or whatever that other Cena is. Let's snap some cheek guards in and see what we have. This is so easy at this point. If this looks like it's going to work, when you're doing your helmet, 
it will be abundantly clear where those wires have to go. But if this retrofits this easily, I will be very, very happy. I can't believe, honestly, at this point that this is what's going on because I was told this was going to be a total nightmare. And it still may be. <laughs> Again, these cheek pads, they slip right in. There's little slots in there. You can't see them. There are three snaps, two in the front, one in the back. That's all there is to those. No real trick to this stuff. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Again, the first time I disassembled a showy helmet, I was mortified to spend this much money on a helmet and then start ripping it apart and it not really make a whole lot of sense to me the first time I go to use it. It was just very disconcerting to me. So let's snap this other side in and see, because I do have wires that I'm gonna be contending with on this side, working my way, working my way around. Big thing, you don't wanna force things because that is never, ever good. Now I will tell you that Coach Pick often tells me, she goes, you are the most patient man in the world when doing this kind of stuff. And I may appear to be, but inside. <laughs> okay, let me tell you the only thing that I saw that looked like it presented anything and it really wasn't an issue is around where this clip goes around that edge, you have to feed it back through there. So this is what I have. Um, I'm just gonna tell you, crazy enough, this thing's installed. Turn it on. As ridiculous as it looks right now, it just said my phone is connected. So what I'm going to do at this point, let's play a little music and see if we have sound. Perfect, wonderful. So I have sound in here and this is where it needs to be as well. Hey Siri, call Vic. Man, I tell you, it has great audio in here. I will tell you that. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Ooh, that's loud. I'm talking to you on my Cardo Pack Talk Bold installed into my Shoei Neotech 2. Pretty amazing, huh? I didn't, I, and, it, and it worked with all of the existing stuff. I didn't even have to use the stick on. Pin lock installed, I just have to put the face shield back on and that's it. All right, so it looks like the uh, Shoei Neotech and the Pack Talk Bold are in fact compatible. I'm gonna go on a little ride here in a moment and we'll see what kind of noise it has. So there you have it, the unboxing, huh? Yeah, pretty exciting. Woohoo! Uh, anyway, uh, as you can see, I got my helmet mount on there. I just mounted it like I did the one on my AGV. Very simple, with the same microphone, as a matter of fact. And like I said, I've got my Cardo Pack Talk stuff in there. Everything looks good. Everything's working properly. It was really easy. Uh, I don't have an hour in the camera or the um, communication mount combined. Um, they were super easy installations on this helmet. When I lift the chin bar, the helmet goes up with it. The microphone's attached to the inside of the chin bar for the camera. And then I've got my, of course, my, my boom mount for the communication device. So the Neotech, as far as setting it up for a vlogging helmet, pretty easy. Don't think you're going to have any problems with it. You'll like that aspect of it. So ease of use. We're going to give a hit a few different things. First, ease of use, let's just get that out of the way. Five stars. One being the worst, five being the best. So number two, quality of the helmet. Well, the quality of the helmet is exactly what you would expect from Shoei. The, the finish of it, the, the uh, quality of the shell, uh, all of the internal components, the fitment, the visor, everything on this helmet is absolutely top quality. The vents, as you open and close them, they're not, you know, fumbling and, and messy. Everything works as it should, and I mean top notch as it should. So when you start looking at quality, you're getting showy quality. You're paying for showy quality. You doggone well ought to. So let's get that out of the way. Quality of this helmet, uh, five stars. Finish everything as far as that goes. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now let's talk about noise, wind noise. Now I don't have a dead cat, which is the big fuzzy piece over this microphone. So if that gives you an idea, I don't know what you're hearing. I know what I'm hearing. Behind the windshield, this helmet is as quiet as my Shoei GT Air. It is. So when it has a little wind protection, 
Right. Um, cool. <laughs> I got the big thumbs up there. <laughs> nice, huh? Um, so when you're behind the windshield and the windshield's offering you any wind protection at all, it is absolutely five stars. The insulation of the helmet and all that stuff, it's five stars. It's beautiful. I will say this, though. Compared to my GT Air, and that's what I'm going to compare it to as far as sound without a windshield, on a two-wheeled motorcycle, the Neotech is not, I repeat, it is not as quiet as a traditional full-face helmet. Was I a little disappointed in that? I'm going to just be honest with you. I was, but I'm not beat up over it. It wasn't a deal breaker for me. So let's talk, let, so let's do a quick rating. We're going to say noise. Noise even at highway speeds, and we're going to get up to highway speeds here in just a moment. As soon as I get around these curves, I'll run this thing up to about 60 with the windshield up, and I'll drop the visor for you. But noise with the windshield, I'm going to give it a five-star rating. If you have a windshield and you ride a spider or a touring bike, there it is. It's sealed off. We'll get around this curve. We'll speed up to 70, and you can hear what it, what I'm hearing. So at highway speeds with a windshield, it's absolutely as quiet as my GT Air. I'm going to stand up here. You can hear... Um, is it because of the communication device? No, it's not. Um, the thing is, the GT Air, it, it just provides a cleaner wind deflection surface. So it's quiet compared to my AGV. It is quieter than my AGV when I'm up here. But compared to my GT Air, can't hold a candle to it. So with a windshield, five stars. Without a windshield, three stars as far as noise. That is probably an unfair rating for a modular helmet. Um, I do know that when you look at modular helmets, the quietest helmet out there is the Schubert. I think it's the C3 Pro. It's the only helmet that I saw that looked like it was as quiet or quieter than the Neotech. It also costs more. So understand that the Neotech, as far as modular helmets, you're not going to get any more quiet than that. I'm comparing it to a Shoei GT Air once again. So let's talk about comfort. What about comfort? It feels perfect. I, I know that sounds crazy that I would even say that. The, the fit and finish around the brow and around your neck and face. Huh, check them out. Cyclist. I love it. Dude on a mountain bike leading it out too. But the comfort level is off the charts. That was a screwdriver in the road. That's something you don't want to pick up in a tire, huh? Everything around your head feels and fits. It squeezes where it should and it releases where it should. The vents, I'm telling you, we'll talk about that in a minute, but the, just the comfort on your head, um, no comparison to the AGV or any of those others. It is off the chart, way beyond all of those things, and as well it should. It, it costs a lot more. Ease of on and off with the buckle, all of that stuff. You know, it has the quick release buckle. You can do it with a, a gloved hand. Um, so the convenience aspect of it as well is just off, off the chart. So let's talk about heat and coolness. The one thing about this helmet that you'll learn real quickly is that the vents are superlative. This vent right here on top, right up here, when I open that, you know, a lot of times you go, is that vent open or is that vent closed? And you can't really tell your chin vent, all those things. Are they, is it open or closed? On this helmet, when you open a vent, you actually feel the wind running over your head. Now, I know I'm bald-headed. <laughs> I knew there was going to be a couple of bald jokes. <laughs> but anyway, you can actually feel the wind running over your head. Um, and you don't feel that in the other helmets that I have. None of them. Not like this. This actually feels like wind. 
So you've got a nice chin vent that opens and closes, this front vent that opens and closes, and this rear uh, exhaust vent, it's fixed to just allow, you know, things not to be all bungled up in there, get all funky. So there you have all of that. So overall rating, it, it, and this is, should you purchase a Shoei GT Air? For me, this is a good decision. This allows me to drink coffee on the road. This allows me um, at quick stops not to have to uh, take my helmet off. A lot of those things, when you're trying to communicate with another person, you can lift that, that chin bar up. Um, and it, it is really nice. Now, how hard is it to lift up? Now, I'm doing 60 miles an hour. You're going to weird get a weird camera view. We'll see here. So, basically, you just take this little bar, you squeeze it down, and I'm going to press it up. And it's going to get noisy, and you're going to be looking at the sky if I left you on the other camera. But we're going to do this anyway. Then you bring it right back down. Of course, I've got little microphones in here all over the place. <laughs> now, I will say, if I didn't have all my camera junk in here, it'd be a little easier. <laughs> the uh, chin bar can push the microphone, so you have what, and, and that's something I'm not used to yet. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Lift this up. Now this is with a gloved hand and a camera. You see this? Bring it in. Then bring it down. As long as I remember to push that uh, push that boom microphone uh, in towards my face, and I, and what I want to do is I want to run it slightly under my lip, and I've got one microphone mounted low and one mounted high in here. So, does everything on this helmet work? Is it a good deal? Is it a good bang for the buck? I'm last. One, two, come on. Three, here I go. Four, look at that. Look at that. Is the Shoei Neotech 2, is it a good deal? Is it a bargain? No, it's not a bargain. Is it a good deal? Yes. This is not a bargain helmet. This is not the kind of helmet you go, man, I'm gonna save, you know, 50 bucks. I'm gonna save 100 bucks on. These helmets, when I talk to dealers, they are, they can't discount these things hardly at all. They're, they're, from what I understand, and, and, and you know, you guys who are in the business, you probably know way better than I do about this stuff. But the people that are in the business, when they tell me, Man, there's just no mark on those helmets. I can sell you this AGV for $300 off and I'm going to make money. I can sell you this Shoei for $50 off and I ain't making a nickel. Um, I believe them because, you know, they're not, they're not selling a whole lot of Shoeys. And, they, you know, I mean, they, they understand where their bread and butter is. And, and honestly, they're not trying to sell the Shoeys. The Shoeys sell themselves. So it's worth it. It is worth it. It's just not a bargain. But it wasn't, it wasn't really designed to be, was it? <laughs> it was designed to be a top quality premium helmet, and that is exactly what it is. So for those who are on the fence about the Neotech, I hope I've, I've shed a little light on here for what it is and what it is not. Um, I'm going to get a lot of use out of this helmet, and I love this helmet. Um, I think it's a beautiful helmet. This is the Splicer paint finish in black and red and white, and I really, really like it. It's a beautiful helmet, and I don't know what it looks like on camera yet <laughs> because I haven't seen it on camera, but I will say in person, this is a fine, fine piece of equipment. So you absolutely cannot go wrong with the Shoei Neotech 2.
and the Cardo Pack Talk Bowl will clip right on that bad boy. It just will. <laughs> Even though everybody tells you it won't, it will. It will. Because I did it. And you saw me do it. And it was easy. I think most people are trying to not have dirty air here. And that could be some of my wind noise. It could be. I'm not worried about it, though. Because, like I said, this is a touring helmet for me. I'm not wearing this when I'm riding a sport bike. I'm going to wear my AGV, and it's set up for vlogging also. All right. Well, there you have it, my friends. Another episode in the books. So if you would, do me a favor. Like, share, subscribe, all that business. And one more thing. Go out this week, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you are doing it wrong. Now, you go seize the day, and we will see you on the road real, real soon. 